Today we will be discussing about a specific uh, practical approach to implementation of uh, systems which behave intelligently. Earlier we have discussed about one form of knowledge representation and that is logic. We have also seen how inferencing can be carried out in logic. Today we will be discussing our, our, uh, our discussion will focus on rule based systems which is a very practical implementation of uh, intelligent behavior. Of course, it derives from logic, we will see uh, how it is dependent on logic and how it is also some sort of simplification to make the systems uh, implementable under engineering terms. We have seen well formed formula in the case of propositional logic and first order logic. Now these essentially represent assertional knowledge or they represent assertions. What are assertions? Whenever I make a statement, today is Sunday, yesterday was very hot. These are some assertions that I am making and these, are, these statements as we know from our knowledge of logic can either be true or can be false. We can say that these can be evaluated to true or can be evaluated to false. These are assertions and we have seen that propositional well formed formulae or predicate well formed formulae all evaluate to either true or false. Now if we look at these assertions in a little more detail, we can see that these can be decomposed or these can be categorized into two different forms. One is rules, another is facts. Now rules are assertions given in implicational form. I hope all of you remember what is meant by implication. P implies Q, okay? that is an implication and rules are usually given in that form. We will soon see how the rules look like. There is another set of assertions which we call facts which represent domain specific knowledge. Say if the boy, the boy is intelligent, just we say the boy is intelligent, that is an assertion. It may be a true, true statement or it may be a false statement. But when we assume that it is a fact, then we usually assume that it is true, the boy is intelligent. But if we say that the boy, if the boy is intelligent, if the boy is intelligent, then the boy will score good marks. That is a rule we are saying and this implication is being noted by this construct if then. So we can have a complete knowledge system which consists of two distinct components one is rules, another is facts. We can have a set of facts which are uh, presented from the domain of discourse. For example, let us uh, consider the domain of geometry, school geometry. We can say ABC is a triangle. We can also say ABC is an isosceles triangle. AB and AC are two sides of the triangle. Now all these three statements that I have made are nothing but assertions, but there is no implication in that. I have just said AB and AC are two sides of the triangle. I have said ABC is a triangle or ABC is an isosceles triangle. All these are facts. Now if I say if ABC is an isosceles triangle, then the sides are equal. If ABC is an isosceles triangle, then the side, two sides are equal. Now this is a rule which I am stating and based on this rule, using this implication that is inherent in this rule, I can infer new facts. Okay? Let us go a little further. Now in logic, we represent lo knowledge in declarative 
am static wave. Okay? We just say we we say we make statements which are declarative. And rules in logic say what is true given some conditions. For example, when I say if A B C is an is an isosceles triangle, then sides A B and A C are equal. Now, therefore, using this rule, if I know that ABC is indeed an isosceles triangle, then I can fa I can infer um, the new fact that AB and AC are equal. All right. So, rules in logic are stating, are saying what is true given some conditions. What is the condition? The condition is that ABC is an isosceles triangle. And what am I saying using this implication? I am saying that rule is implicitly saying, therefore, A, B and A, C are equal. Now, rule based systems, same rules, these are just implications, implication statements in logic. Now, in case of rule based systems, we go a little one step further. Our implications, that means the right hand side of an implication, usually in logic makes another assertion. Okay? If the boy studies hard, hard, then he will score good marks. This is an assertion. But I am not asking anything to be done. On the other hand, look at this statement. If the temperature of a plant of a furnace is very high, then shut the heater off. Now, look here in the implication, I am not just making an assertion, I am also asking for some action, shut the heater off. So, that is also possible to be stated in a rule. So, rule based systems are based on rules that say what to do. Okay? Now, here I would like to make a distinction between uh, two types of knowledge representation. One type is declarative knowledge representation. That means, where we just say what is to be done but we do not say how the thing has to be done. Whenever we write a program, say for example, sorting a number okay, or write a program to draw a diagram, there in that program itself, we specifically mention all the steps that we need to carry out in order to perform a particular task. There we specify how exactly the thing has to be done. But in a declarative system, as in a logic, we make some assertions. Okay? We make some assertions. We make some statement. Now, which statement has to be executed at which point of time is not the headache of these rules. That headache will be transferred to another thing, another system called the control mechanism or the inference mechanism. That is why often this sort of knowledge representation is also called declarative knowledge representation, whereas the type of knowledge that we are embedding in the case of a program is often called procedural knowledge representation. However, in this case we can see that rule based systems can be of this form if this is the case, that means the condition, then do this. This is one way of stating that. It is also possible to state in this way that do this. All right? But um, we can also make some assertions over here. And as I said just now, that these rules are just some declarations which do not say how the thing has to be done we require a special interpreter, a special interpreter which I just now said as a control mechanism, okay, control 
there are different names for it control mechanism, uh, inference engine, inference machine, different names, but the purpose is the same. That is a procedural block of knowledge that interprets these rules, that applies these rules as the case may be. Now, we can have very simple rules which are very similar to the rules in logic, but we can think of now what can a rule do? A particular rule has got, if you recall, a rule has got uh, the left hand side part which we call the antecedent or the condition part if this is the case. If this is the case, that is if it is really true that this is the case, then on the other side of the implication some actions may be stated, shut off the heater, open the window, close the tap, okay. or we can infer, we can make some assertions the boy is intelligent, <coughs> the season is monsoon. Okay. Consider a rule, if it is raining every day, then possibly the season is monsoon All right. or, or if it is monsoon, then there is high chance that it will be, they will be raining, there will be rain today. Now the condition is, if the season is monsoon, and suppose my fact is it is really the month of July which is a season of monsoon. So, the fact is true. So, given that given this fact to be true, we can infer a new fact that possibly it will rain today. That is another fact, but that we are inferring, but we are not stating any action as we had done if the right hand side were shut off the heater, open the tap, etcetera. So, a rule, a consequent of a rule can be either an action or can be a new fact. If it be an action, that action is taken by the interpreter, that action is executed by the interpreter and if it is a fact, then that fact is added to the fact base of the rule based system. <coughs> All right. Also, another important thing is that along with the facts, degrees of certainties can be associated. Just now in the course of discussion, I have stated a uh, rule, if the season is monsoon, then it is possible that it will rain today. I can make a statement in different ways, the same statement. If the season is monsoon, then there is 60 percent chance of raining today. I can also say, if the season is monsoon, then it is highly probable that the that it will rain today. Now, these are you see that it will rain today is not coming as it is, but I am also adding some possibilities, some certainties with this statement. So, when I infer a new fact, what is the new fact? that I am inferring given that the season is monsoon, my fact that will be inferred will be possibly it will rain today, it is 60 percent probable that will rain today, etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. So, it is possible that I can associate some sort of uncertainties with these rules. Now, let us again think back what happened to logic. In simple propositional logic or predicate logic, we had an assertion which could either be evaluated to be true or false. These were the two possibilities, there was nothing in between. But here along with these facts, I can add on some certainties. In a separate lecture later on, we will see how we can in an intelligent system, how we can handle such uh, uncertainties. Um, so, we just for the time being we remember that in the case of rules or rule based system, when we infer a fact, this can be a hard fact which can be either true or false or it can be a fact which is associated with some sort of certainty, some degree of belief or disbelief whatever it is. Okay. So, it is no longer black and white decision, there can be a gray region in between. 
Now, we can have also different control strategies which are often heuristic. We often need to take decisions in real world where we do not have all the possible information that we need. Often we have got very partial information about a scenario. Suppose you want to travel from a place A to place B. You know some facts that there is a bus route from A to B and there is also a train railways connecting A to B. You do not know exactly what the fares are. But if you really need to uh, save money, then probably you will select bus travel because your other domain knowledge in general tells you that bus travel is often cheaper than train travel. May not always be true, but let us assume that as a scenario. So, so, you have got some partial information and based on this partial information and the other domain specific knowledge that you might have got through some other means or general knowledge that you have, there are some thumb rules of making decisions and you, we often use those to take the decisions and we can say well probably bus will be cheaper mode of travel. So, going from A to B for low cost bus could be a better way of going. Now, these sort of decisions that we often make do not may not always have a very strong logical basis, but these are often very much practical and we often take such decisions. All right. So, these are we will we'll encounter this scenario time and again. This term for this is heuristic all right. and such heuristics we will be employing for uh, rule based systems as well for different control schemes we will see. Now, let us see here is an example of a rule based system. Uh, if it rains today, the roads will be wet today. This is clearly understood when we write in English. We can write this in the form of logic as rains, which is a predicate. Rains today implies implication wet roads today. Or in the form of a rules, we, rule, we can say if rains today, then wet road today. Now, you see the correspondence between this logic statement and this rule. All right. Again, this is one rule. There is another rule that I have added here. If rains today and not covered roads, that is if the roads are not covered, then wet road today. Now, look at the difference between these two rules. This rule is obviously more specific because it says that the road will be wet today if it rains today and the roads are not covered. Whereas, this is a statement which is uh, much weaker if rains today then wet road today. Okay. Now, look at the antecedent part of this rule. Rains today is an antecedent and wet road today is a consequent. All right. In this case, we have got a number of antecedents rains today and not covered roads. These are two antecedents and these two together we call the antecedent field or simply we call them antecedent. Now, what happens to this rule? If the fact is that rains today, that means if rains today evaluates to be true, then we will conclude that the roads will be wet today, this part. Okay, wait road today. On the other hand, here, when will we infer wait road today? We will infer wait road today if both these conjuncts of this antecedent evaluate to be true. In our discussion, I will often refer to this to be the antecedent part or the antecedent field, and each of them are them are individual antecedents. Now, when does this rule really eval really, really work? This rule will be active when both these antecedents since they are connected with an and are both true. Suppose the fact is it rains today and the roads are covered today. 
in that case according to this rule this part will be true, but this part will not be true because the roads are covered then I cannot really infer that the road will be wet today. Okay. So, in a rule we have got two parts one is the antecedent part and there is a consequent part. The antecedent part can consist of one fact or can be a conjunct of facts or anticonditions okay. and look at this consequent. I was just now talking of two different types of consequent some things can be actions and some things can be assertions. Wet road today is simply an assertion that is adding to my collection of facts and so since I know it rained today and not covered today I know one more fact that the road is wet today. Okay. Might be there is another rule if it is wet road today then uh, wear good shoes or something of the, of the sort. So, that I can so, this fact can be used further to infer something more. Now, which are the facts here? I have already said that facts are which are already known a priori, but you can see that facts are also generated just as in this case in this example weight road today is a new fact that has been generated. All right. So, now I hope all of you recall what is meant by modus ponens which was a very common uh, deduction mechanism that we talked about when we are talking about logical inferences. Here we just revisit modus ponens for a second let us see. <coughs> Here you see P implies Q and P. So, P implies Q is an implication and P is a fact that is given. So, given these two using modus ponens what can we infer? We infer q that means, if p is true then q is true and since p is true we infer q is true. Now, suppose there is another rule q implies r that means, if q is true then r is true. Now, here from these two we have inferred q and again from these two we can infer r. So, you can see that if we consider this to be a rule and this to be a fact then we can infer a new fact and using this fact and another rule which rule the rule which has got this one the say this fact q as its antecedent we can infer another fact r. So, you can see therefore, starting from this fact given fact p and these two rules p implies q and q implies r. I can infer first q and then r. So, this sort of p this rule is allowing me to infer q and inferring q is allowing me to infer r. So, this phenomenon is also known as rule chaining where we are inferring a fact using a rule new fact using a rule and with a newly inferred rule I am uh, sorry uh, with a newly inferred fact I am applying another rule and inferring a new fact and the chain can go on. Okay. So, let us now come to <coughs> uh, rule based systems once again. Now, rule based systems are also known as uh, production systems. Those of you who have worked uh, on compiler you have seen that often grammars uh, are uh, specified in the form called Bacchus Nor form which is also a set of productions. You I leave it to you to find the similarity between those statements which are given in Bacchus Nor form and uh, the type of rules that we will be discussing. Certainly, there are quite a few similarities. Now, you see a rule based system which is also known as production systems is a system whose knowledge base is represented as a set of rules <coughs> and facts. So, we were talking about knowledge representation earlier. Logic was one form of knowledge representation. We will see different other types of knowledge representation as well. Now, rule based system is therefore, one type of knowledge representation where the knowledge is represented as a set of rules and a set of facts. Now, we have already seen this a rule based system consists of a collection of rules which are in if then form and a collection of facts 
n now with this rules and facts we would not be able to infer anything unless there is another interpreter or control engine whatever name you give it inference mechanism which will look at these facts and see which rule is applicable now and apply that particular rule and generate a new fact. Because in my rule base, I will have thousands of rules. Now, given a particular objective, a particular problem that I want to solve, all these rules may not be relevant. So, it is essential that I have to find out only those rules which are relevant at this particular point of application. So, that task is done by the interpreter and in today's lecture, we will see how the interpreter applies these rules, how the interpreter selects these rules and what does this interpreter really do to infer new facts and thereby solve some problems. Okay. <coughs> Now, as I said, the rules are represented in the following form, if antecedent, then consequent. An antecedent can be a conjunction of a number of antecedents. Okay. When the antecedent part is null, it is also possible that I will just have then this or I just have a consequent. If the antecedent part is null, then obviously it becomes a fact, that is a true fact. A fact in general, we will assume that a fact is true. Okay. Now, a rule says that if these conditions are true, then I can infer a new fact. But if no conditions are given, then that consequence stands on its own merit, on its own right. So, it is true, it is fact. All right. Some of you might recall, if you have written, uh, I mean those of you have written C programs, while one, while true, those sort of structures, which is always true. So, similarly, if there is no condition attached to a rule, then it becomes a mere fact. All right. Now, here is a statement that I am making, rules are normally represented as horn claws. There is a reason for this, I will introduce horn clause, but before that I assume that uh, you recall what a clause is, a clausal form. A clausal form consists of a disjunction of literals, a disjunction of literals. For example, P or not Q or R, that is a clause, all right, that is a particular form and implications can also be converted to clausal form. Horn clause is a particular form of such clauses and it is preferred that rule based systems be based on horn clauses. Let us see what it means. Look at this implication P implies Q. Now, the clausal form of this you will recollect is not P or Q because this implication just as a say uh, for the sake of revision it means that if p is true, then q is true. All right. Now, if p is true, then q is true, otherwise p is not true. So, not p or q, that is the clausal form. Similarly, p and q implies r, this is a rule form. I can convert it to the clausal form not p or not q or r, this is a clausal form. Now, look at this p and q implies r or s. If I convert it to clausal form, it becomes not P or not Q or R or S. Now, this is not a mm, horn clause. What is a horn clause? First, let us look at that. Horn clauses, first of all, they must be clauses. That is why I have underlined it. They must be clauses. <coughs> horn clauses can have at most one non-negative literal, at most one non-negative literal. Look over here, here we have Q is a non-negative literal, here R is a non-negative literal. 
there is only one non-negative literal, but in this case we have got two non-negative literals. So, this is not a horn clause. So, these are acceptable rules, but this is not typically in a rule based system. It is not the case that you cannot write rules like this, but usually it is not encouraged and the reason is there are some uh, co uh, severe consequences to this, but I am not going into that in this lecture, but simply let us try to see if I use this particular form which is not a horn clause because it has got more than one non-negative literal, what is the problem? Suppose my fact base says that the person is rich that is P and the person is large hearted, okay. so P and Q. Then the person will make donation or the person will um, build up a school or whatever. So, there are two possible implications that you can take. Now, in the case of an implementation or execution, the interpreter will really be in a problem to select which one of these consequences it should infer. Should it infer both? Because I do not know whether both of them are true. This part will be true if any one of them is true or should it infer any one? If it has to infer any one, then which one should it infer? All right. So, those problems really crop up, but those problems are absent in this case if P implies Q or P and Q implies R. So, we usually stick to horn clauses. That means, in the consequence part, we would not keep a disjunction. Okay. Now, there are two more terms which we should first understand. Try to imagine, I mean the rule for a rule based system, we have got a rule base and we have got a set of facts which we keep in a fact base. All right. Now, these rules are evaluated to be true. Now, when is a rule applicable? A rule is applicable when all its conditions evaluate to true. If any of the conditions evaluate to false, then that rule is not applicable. Now, it may be the situation that given a set of facts and the set of rules, more than one rules can have their conditions satisfied. So, more than one rules are applicable. We call that that these rules are triggered and out of this triggered rules, that means those rules are all enabled to be fired. Now, when we apply a particular rule, we say that that rule is fired and what happens when a rule is fired? When a rule is fired, then the consequent part, whatever is specified in the consequent is inferred or that action is taken. So, if it is inferred, if that new fact is inferred, that then, then this fact is added to the fact base. If a new con, uh, if if the rule just specifies some action, and if that action is taken, that action creates some state change. For example, if I as as I was giving the example, uh, put off the heater, then the heater is put off. So the state change is that earlier the heater was on, and I change that fact, I delete that fact, heater is on, and add a new fact, heater is off. So, in either case, there is a change in the fact base when a rule is fired, but it is not the case that all the rules which are enabled are, are fired. I can either fire any one of them, if I have to fire any one of them, I have to make a decision as to which one I should fire, all these things are there. But first of all, let us make a distinction that a rule is triggered when all its antecedents evaluate to true and the rule is fired when the action stated in the consequent part or the inference related to the cons consequent part is inferred or is taken. Okay. So, we will make a distinction between these two. Now, look at this architecture. 
this is an overall architecture of a rule based system. You can see look at this big rectangle, this is known as forget about the rules which are written over here, forget about this for the time being. These rules, all these rules that are here constitute the rule base, whereas we can have a number of facts stored and that is known as a fact base and here there is a procedural component which can as I said which can have different names, control scheme, interpreter, inference machine, control engine, there are different rules, uh, different names which are given to this. Now you see, look at these arrows, what does this control scheme do or the interpreter do? It is looking at the facts and looking at the rules and it is trying to see given the particular set of facts, which are the rules which are, which are applicable, which are triggered. Now, out of the rules which are triggered, it will fire one or more than one and consequently when the rule is fired, a new fact will be generated and that will update this fact base. So, at the top level, we look at three components in a rule based system, the rule base, the fact base and an inference machine. Okay. These are the three basic components of a rule based system. Next, let us look into these rules. Here the rule is if hot and smoky, if hot and smoky, then add fire. Rule 2 says if alarm beeps, then add smoky. Rule 3 says if fire, then add switch on sprinkler. So, here we are, uh, we are talking of a toy problem where we have got an intelligent system installed, uh, rule based intelligent system installed, which has got some sensors in the put on in the room and is sensing temperature, it is trying to see whether the temperature has become very hot, it is also uh, there are smoke detectors. So, it is trying to see whether there is any fire and if it infers that there is fire, it will automatically start on sprinkler or it will um, set up an alarm which will uh, make people run and uh, start the sprinklers on. So, that sort of scenario. So, we have modeled that using a toy problem, we have modeled it with these three rules. And what is there in the fact base? Alarm, bips and hot. So, there are two, two facts. One is alarm, bips and hot. Now, let us see. If since the alarm bips, what is this control scheme? What will this control scheme do? It will look at these rules. Now, which rule is enabled? I can see also hot. All right. So, this rule has got this antecedent satisfied, if hot, yes, true. So, this is satisfied. And smoky, well, I do not know anything about smoky here in my database of facts. So, I cannot say that it is smoky. So, this part is true, hot is true, but this smoky is false. So, this antecedent part of this rule is not completely satisfied, right. It is not completely satisfied. So, this rule does not apply. Next, uh, so it looks at, so it, it cannot, this rule is not triggered. It comes to the second rule. If alarm beeps, well, looks at the fact base, alarm beeps is there, so this part is true. So, this rule is obviously enabled because it has got no other antecedents. This entire antecedent field, this antecedent part is satisfied. Well, let us look at the third rule. If fire, well, no. I do not know anything about fire here, nothing is here. So, this antecedent is also not true. So, this rule is also not triggered. In this case, we have got only one rule that is triggered, that is rule R2. So, the control scheme then finds that only R2 is uh, triggered. So, it has got no choice, it fires that. And what does this, uh, what is the consequent part of this rule R2? The consequent part says, 
if alumbips then add smoky. So, it immediately adds when it fires it adds to the database a new fact smoky and you can well guess what will happen next. The control scheme will next look at again which rules are being enabled afresh hot is true. So, this part is true and now smoky is also true. Since smoky is true this entire antecedent part is true it is then it will okay this rule is R 2 is also true, but R 2 is already fired. So, we are taking up the strategy that I will not fire the rule one rule time and again it tries for the third rule fire no I cannot I have got nothing in the database as yet which tells that there is a fire. So, only this rule is enabled this rule is fired and what is the consequence of this rule add fire. So, a new fact is added to the fact says sweep says fire. So, what am I inferring? I am inferring that yes there is a fire. Now, I again go back to this cycle and look at this third rule. The third rule is now enabled if fire then add switch on sprinkler. So, now this third rule will fire and sprinkler on will be put in the database. So, essentially this is the way in which uh, a rule based system will work. Now, if you have noted this example very clearly, then you will realize that this can be modeled in the form of an automata of inferencing. Okay. And what is that automata? There are three phases. In the first phase, so what are the components that I have? I have got a set of rules, I have got a set of facts. Now, what are the other components and the inference machine is also there. So, what is happening? First, the inference machine is looking at the fact base and the rule base and trying to find a match which of the rules are triggered. If it finds that more than one rules are triggered, then it will have to select some of the rules, maybe one rule or maybe a subset of these rules. And after that let us for the sake of simplicity for the time being let us assume that they are selecting only one rule and that rule is then fired that is executed. And when that rule is executed what is happening? A new fact is being generated in the fact space. So, we can essentially carry it on in the form of a cycle. So, here is what is depicted the inference machine or the interpreter okay, is a machine that implements the strategies to utilize the knowledge base and derive new conclusions from it. Now, how it is being done? Here is the automata of an inference machine. There are three phases. First is the match phase, then there is a conflict resolution phase and then there is an execute phase. Now, the match in the match phase the inference machine is comparing the fact base and the rule base and it will find out some rules which are matching. If no rules are matching then we cannot proceed any further, but suppose there is a set of rules which are matching. Then those set of rules are being passed on I mean will be used by the next stage which is the conflict resolution stage. Where is the conflict? The conflict is among the rules. There are five rules which are triggered in the match phase. Now, which of these rules I shall be firing? For that, I need to have some strategy which is often called the heuristic strategy. Okay. We often use heuristic, but using heuristic what we do is a conflict resolution strategy. I will be selecting one rule or more than one rule. Okay which of this subset of match rules, which further subset I will be executing. That is decided in the conflict resolution phase. So, we come to the conflict resolution phase and after the conflict resolution phase, we decide on which rules to fire. And then that in with that information, we go to the next state, which is known as the execute state. 
in the execute state those rules are fired and when the rule is fired see here in the match phase we passed on only the triggered rules to the conflict resolution state now in the conflict resolution stage we have resolved the conflicts and we have selected some rules to be fired and when the rules are fired then the firing causes a change in the again the new fact in the fact base new facts are added all right after that so after this execute we will again come to the match phase but how long will it continue so in we will come to the match phase and in the match phase again the matching will be done and we'll see which rule is enabled again we'll do conflict resolution we'll do execute and this cycle will continue now how long will this cycle continue this cycle will continue until the goal or the objective with which we are trying to solve the problem the <coughs> the problem that we have we are trying to solve that that is that we call a goal as long as the goal is not met we should try to do this but it may be that we have not been able to solve the goal and we do not have enough rules at our hand see rules are essentially representation of knowledge and knowledge is always limited and often there are situations when we the human beings fail to solve a problem because of lack of knowledge maybe at times okay so in those cases we try till we exhaust all the knowledge components that we have so we will carry it on but if we can solve a particular problem then we'll stop otherwise we'll exhaust our, the, our knowledge source and then stop so this scenario will this cycle will continue after every execution phase it will go to this rule base and after every execute it will check for the goal whether the goal is met if the goal is met then we'll stop otherwise we'll carry on with this cycle so this is a very fundamental cycle of rule based system okay so here is a summary the execute state fires the rules once all its antecedents match okay and essentially the function of the execute state can be thought of as searching for a path to the goal in a third phase here i have added a new name search phase okay so what i'm trying to say here is that through these rules we are essentially trying to depict all the possible ways in which a problem can be solved our objective is to solve a particular problem that is a goal okay and in order to do that there may be different alternative paths all the paths may not lead me to the goal but there are paths which may lead me to the goal so effectively our task is to search through this entire space which i am calling the search space now here is a third space denoted typically a third space that is denoted by uh, the k you can see now this one this state that i am showing is the start state k the this start state and i have got a goal state also here this orange node is a goal state and this uh, root node of this is a goal state uh, is a start state now the start state at what do i have at the start, uh, start state i have got the my rules and i know about the goal and right now this goal is not solved okay so i start my rule based system from here and with the with the facts that i have and the rules that i have i try to see which are the rules which are applicable which are triggered suppose at this point three rules are triggered i have just uh, named only two of them one is r1 and this r5 so but i am denoting using this three structure this uh, set of rules okay so i can take now so i i can see what this one shows is that at this state 
the result of my match which I was showing here, this match has resulted into three rules which are being passed to this conflict resolution module. And in that, I have suppose I have I have resolved in favor of R1. So, I can come to R1 and when I fire R1, a particular rule R1, I will be adding new facts to the rule. So, I will continuously refer to this diagram. So, I have resolved in favor of R1 and that has been executed and new facts have has been new facts have been added to this fact base okay. and that might have enabled me with uh, two other rules and I can select any one of them. Suppose I have selected this one that and have fired this rule. So, here there was again a conflict at this state again a match has been done and two rules have succeeded these are triggered given this new state and I have fired this rule and I have come to a new state. Okay. And as I come to this new state and if I fire this rule, I will come to the goal node, I will come to the goal node. So, this is now, but what is what are my possibilities? The possibilities are that I could have followed this path, I could have followed this path, please follow the mouse pointer this this path or might be at this conflict resolution strategy I could have followed another path. Suppose I at this point after firing R1 I come to a new state and I fire a new rule and I fire this rule and come to a state from where I do not find any other rule to fire then I cannot what do I do? I cannot do anything. Let us say but I think I can do something. Suppose at this point R1, suppose this is R2 and R5, all these three were enabled, but I have selected in favor of R5 and I have come to this point. And when I come to this node, I after match, I do not find any rule that is enabled. So, I cannot proceed any further, my goal, I cannot reach my goal. But what can I do? What can I do? What I can do is this from here, I can go back to the since this is a dead end and I am not finding any other rule to fire, I can go back to the earlier node to see which are the other possibilities that have been left unexplored. For example, I came to this node, but I found I, I resolved the conflict in favor of R5 and have come to a dead end. So, I go back to the starting node and see well, what are the uh, what are the other choices that I could explore? If I re really remember that yes, there were other alternative paths like R1, R2, etc., and explore these paths, then possibly I could find the path to the goal. Actually, this is what we do in our real life, and this phenomenon is known as backtracking. We often make wrong choices, but when we find that this wrong choice is leading me to a dead end we revise our earlier decision and this is known as backtracking. And what I have depicted over here is the search space and how the rules uh, really traverse the possible search space and my success will really lie on how fast I can arrive at the goal from the starting state. So, what we have just now learned is that uh, is the phenomenon of backtracking. If the inference machine reaches a dead end, that is no new rule is enabled and the goal is not met. If the goal is met, then I am successful. If the goal is not met, then we will backtrack to the earlier node as we have done here. We will backtrack to the earlier node and see whether there are some unexplored possibilities and we will be exploring that. Okay. And so, backtracking is a very important uh, uh, methodology of really exploring the search space because it is often not possible to really make the correct choice all the time. It may not always be possible. So, we will 
select the rules which are not proper given a particular conflict. And obviously, conflict resolution strategy plays a crucial role over here. If we have a good conflict resolution strategy, then obviously the backtracking will be reduced. If we have good conflict resolution strategy, then we will be reducing the backtracking. Now, in this lecture, we conclude at this point where I have just tried to give you an overview of what rule based systems are and how they work. In the next lecture, we will look into other aspects, we will look into uh, more examples, we will look into uh, more details of inference mechanism. But I hope that you have understood uh, how a set of rules um, really help us in solving the problem. You should remember a couple of things, the distinction between rules and facts, the distinction between um, uh, match phase, conflict resolution strategy and execution strategy. You must understand what is an inference mechanism. An inference mechanism actually selects the rules to be fired uh, from given a set of facts. So, given all these, we will move to move on to the next lecture, we'll, where we will be going into more details of rule based systems.